Instagram CEO Adam Mosseri, he took over from the app's founder last fall. Mosseri responding to concerns about deepfakes. Those are videos that are edited to be misleading. This after outrage following Facebook's refusal to remove manipulated videos of both Nancy Pelosi and Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg. Mosseri saying they do not have a policy against deepfakes, and he doesn't feel good about that. But if it takes too long to identify it, at that point, the damage is done. We could declare victory, but that's not a victory at all. That's totally hollow. So the thing we're focused on right now, very internally, is not whether or not you take it down when you find it, but how do you find it more quickly? Because if we don't, if a million people see a video like that in the first 24 hours or in the first 48 hours... The damage is done, The you're damage saying. is done. Mosseri also denied that Instagram listens to consumers or looks at their messages to deliver ads based on what people are talking about. Maybe you're really into food and restaurants. Yeah. You saw a restaurant on Facebook or on Instagram. You maybe like the thing. It's top of mind. Maybe that's subconscious, and then it bubbles up later. I think this kind of happens often in ways that are really subtle, but we don't, we don't look at your messages. We don't listen on your microphone. Uh, doing so would be super problematic from, for a lot of different reasons. Now, these two lines of questioning, whether people can trust the videos they see on Facebook and Instagram, or whether they can even trust that the company is not spying on them, speaks to consumer concerns about Facebook and its family of apps that don't seem to be going away. Guys? Julia, I think this, this issue of whether Facebook and Instagram are listening, I hear it. I hear it come up all the time, but it shows to me just how good their targeting is. Like sometimes they can guess what you're going to talk about before you even know that you're going to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, look, John, it's definitely a sign that their ads are good. The question is, are they too good that it's creeping people out? And are people creeped out enough that they're going to opt out of ad targeting, um, which, of course, would be bad for Facebook and make those ads less valuable? But what Instagram and Facebook would argue is that having ads that are that good, that it almost seems like they're listening to you, would make them more valuable to you and actually things that you will want to click on. Yeah, I'm totally one of these people that's creeped out because I get a lot of these hyper-targeted ads and I do feel like, at times, feel like um, it's more than coincidence. Uh, but that being said, the deep fake part of this, it's really, really worrisome to me. And I can't help but think that from a Facebook and Instagram point of view and social media in general, it's a really big future business problem as well because if, it, if you have further erosion of quality control, content control, as you mentioned, is that going to turn users and potentially advertisers away? I think you're absolutely right, Morgan. This is the next frontier. We're just starting to see the early days of these deep fake videos. And from what I understand, the real challenge is, is that the technology can be so sophisticated that it's going to be hard to identify them and pull them down before they could go viral. So um, this is definitely something that Facebook and these other platforms such as YouTube are thinking about. Um, but we're just uh, uh, sort of at the the tip, uh, sort of seeing the tip of the spear in terms of how bad and how dangerous these could be. I mean, if you look at the difference between this coming election cycle and the last two cycles, there really weren't deepfakes then. But the question is sort of how fast that technology is moving and whether the next round of manipulation that we see around the elections could be from deepfakes, people seeing videos well, Julia, that are just totally fabricated. Julia, it seems to me the problem here really is that social media companies have worked hard to destroy the idea of credibility. It's like content from anybody is just as good as content from anybody else. One of the ways you could fix this is by having a tier of content from people who promise to post true stuff. And then if they post anything that's close to a deep fake, you delegitimize them. And then yes, if somebody I mean, goes on yeah. and they're looking, right? Well, you're talking about creating sort of a whitelisted group of respected news outlets. And I think that totally makes sense. John, that's something that I've been talking about for a while. You know, why not sort of distinguish between different types of news outlets? But I think when you're saying that social media destroyed the idea of credibility, they might say that they just sort of expanded the idea of credibility, saying that you know, a much broader definition of people, you know, group of people could be publishers of content. Um, I think that we, we may see them move closer to that idea, this idea of sort of trusted news sources. And they're already trying to, you know, post warnings on different types of content that are not necessarily legit or safe. And they're saying they're going to sort of deprioritize that questionable content and make it harder to share. But they're not saying that they're going to pull it down 
um, entirely unless it's totally dangerous. So the question is how much further Facebook and Instagram go in terms of raising the bar of what kind of content is really allowed on their platform rather than just um, deprioritizing it.